So let's let's do some problems, right? We notice it's in a circular path. So you think, okay, let me draw a free body diagram and let me define my axes normal and tangential. All right, so what if you have a race car going around this banked track? And this question, we're going to calculate the banking angle theta for the racetrack so that the wheels of the racing cars will not have to depend upon friction to prevent any car from sliding up or down the track. Assume the cars have negligible size. They've got a mass M. They travel around a curved radius of R with a constant speed V. Okay. Let's draw a free body diagram of a race car on a banked track. So. Uh, Here's our, our banking angle theta. So it's like it's on an incline. And here, here's my car right here coming straight at me. All right, it's driving straight at me. All right, so it's going around this, this track. It's coming, coming at me, but it's going in a circular path. What forces would I have on my free body diagram? I would have the weight, mg. I would have the normal force in, so that's the force of the road pushing up on the track. Uh, it's going at a constant speed, so it's not accelerating in the tangential direction. Do you see what, what direction the tangential? Tangential would be straight out at me, out of the paper. Um, so I'm not going to draw the tangential direction out of the paper. Since it said it had a constant V, I know there's no acceleration in that direction. So there's actually no forces that we need to worry about in the tangential direction for this problem. All right, so how about friction? Think about friction. It says something about determine the angle so that it doesn't have to depend on friction to prevent the car from sliding up or sliding down the track. So you can imagine if a car was going very, very slowly, it would want to slide down the track and the force of friction, don't draw this, the force of friction would be, would keep it from going down the track. Uh, so there'd be a force of friction up the track. But if it's going really fast, it, it kind of wants to slide off, slide up the track. And so the force of friction would be down um, right here. But what it's really telling you, determine the angle so the cars will not have to depend on friction for sliding up or down the track. So does it, do you see that it's really telling you, find the angle where the force of friction up and down the track is zero. Right. Sometimes the hardest part about these problems is deciphering what that sentence is really telling you. You know, why didn't they just say find the angle theta where the force of friction is equal to zero, you know, up and down the track. So so sometimes they, they give it to you a roundabout way. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to try to find the angle where the force of friction is zero. Let's let's just. It's, it's not there up and down the track. All right, so anyway, those are the only forces acting on my free body diagram. Okay. Yes. Correct, right. There's, there's no tangential acceleration because it's constant velocity. Right, if something says constant velocity, constant speed, really constant speed, There's no such thing as a normal velocity, right? There is normal acceleration. Yes, there is normal acceleration. Yes, there is normal acceleration. We'll get to that. But these, this is just our free body diagram, right? Th these are just the forces we're drawing right here. Don't draw. Some teachers would have you draw a kinetic diagram where you do draw the acceleration on your free body diagram. I, I wouldn't do that, and I don't like to do that. Only draw forces. But think in the back of your mind where the acceleration is. Because next step, define our axes. Define our axes. I would always start with the normal 
what direction would be the normal direction? You see what's happening, visualize what's happening. This car is banking around the angle. It's coming right at me at this, at this second, but you know, it's, it's going around the curve. What direction is the normal direction? Into the curve, absolutely. So what, what direction would that be for my free body diagram? Yes, and perfectly horizontal to the right. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, visualize that horizontal circle. Normal is into the curve. It's not a force. I drew it in green. That's just an axis. Those are just my axes. The nor you see the normal force is not in the normal direction. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Normal force is completely separate from normal direction. Normal force is defined by the, the surface. Normal direction is defined by the circle you know, into the curve. All right, so what is tangential? That would be coming right out at me. Right? Tangential would be coming out of the page. And so what would be perpendicular to both of those, I'm gonna call it Z right here. So those are my axes, all right? So draw a free body diagram, draw all the forces acting on it, define your axes, and now I'm going to sum the forces in the normal direction. Uh, how do you want to, I don't know, see how, I don't know how you look at these angles, uh, what I like to do is I know that that pink angle is the same as the um, incline. So that means this angle is opposite. This angle is back to theta. This angle is opposite. I mean, not opposite, but it's complementary. You see how it's theta, beta, theta, beta, theta, beta, you know, if it's 60, 30, 60, 30, 60, 30, or... No. So, I would say that the in, what are the forces in the normal direction in sine theta? You, you know, you needed to get to that in sine theta, however you need to. I see a Z. Sometimes I like to look at these Zs. Yeah, that angle theta is the same as that angle theta. All right, so in sine theta, let me... And that's the only force in the normal direction, that's fine, equals mass times normal acceleration. And what is normal acceleration? V squared over rho, or V squared over R. All right? Just any forces that are in the normal direction equals mass times acceleration in that direction, which is V squared over R. Uh, we're trying to solve for theta. Let's kind of figure this out. Let's sum the forces in the z direction. Uh, in cosine theta, minus mg equals ma. And then think to yourself, what is a in the z direction? I think we can assume, if it didn't say, that it's, it's keeping that height on the, on the um, ramp. Um, and so it's not going up, it's not going down. Uh, this is equal to zero right here. All right, this is equal to zero. And then we're gonna solve for theta. You know, I prefer problems that have actual numbers, but this, these are good exercises. Uh, how about this? Uh, N cosine theta is equal to mg. And then what if I take that whole top equation divided by that whole bottom equation in sine theta over N cosine theta is equal to mv squared over rho divided by mg. Turns out, and, and many times, not, not every time, sometimes the mass did not even matter. For this problem, it's not the mass that matters. What matters, let's see, sine over cosine is tangent. Uh, v squared matters, rho g matters. So what is the angle where force of friction will be equal to zero? This, you know, inverse tangent, V squared over rho g. Inverse tangent, V squared over rho g. Right? So we, free body diagram, 
find our axes, you know, saw the normal direction, and then said sum of the forces are normal equals m a normal, sum of the forces we didn't have tangential, so then we said sum of the forces z equals m a z, then then solve for what it's asking. Next one. 